The story begins on a rainy night. Strong lightning continuously strikes. Buildings collapsed and this destruction was caused by a girl who is not a simple villainess. Within the world that fell into despair, she wanted to destroy it all. This girl was the mid-level boss in this world. The Witch of Calamity, Yon Hanul, vows to make everything disappear. In the scenario where humans fail to kill her, every being in the world will cease to exist. Game over is the bad ending. But of course, there is an option to try it again as it turned out that it was just a game. Now, on a sunny, ordinary spring day, a new semester was beginning in a fifth grade elementary class. The teacher came, telling the students to go back to their seats. She was with a little girl, a new transfer to this school. The new students had an insanely faint blue color. She greeted everyone and one of the boys inside the class was shocked to see her appearance. That is because she had a round rabbit tail and long rabbit ears that were held high on her head. My name is Yon Hanul, she said. She was shy and scared. She doesn't even know how to move herself. She shares with everyone that her hobbies are reading and listening to music and also watching dramas. All of her classmates were speechless. That day, after looking at her, our main protagonist who only reincarnated in this world remembered his past life. However, there was no reason for him to dwell on nostalgia since in front of him stood someone who had a more mature voice before which was very familiar to him. He was sure enough that this little girl and the witch of calamity in the game he played back then who brought the game world to an end were one. As far as he remembered, the mid-level boss was named Yon Hanul, and this name was also the name that this new student had mentioned. He was so certain that he couldn't deny it even if he wanted to. Because of what he was thinking, he's afraid that this world is now screwed. The game he was playing back then and also the world where he reincarnated is called Brave Hearts. This game which he used to enjoy playing in his past life was about a boy dreaming of becoming the best hunter, the fighting spirit's apprentice, Kang Handel. This was a school action RPG game with this protagonist. This game takes place 200 years after a cataclysm. There were monsters and hunters in a world with advanced science and magic. In order for the protagonist to become a hunter, he enrolls in the most outstanding academy in the educational town and encounters multiple scenarios. Until this point, it looked like a stereotypical youth school life plot, but this story wasn't all that bright. This game had as many as 44 endings. They were mostly bad endings, and that was because most of them were world collapse endings. This game had one more big problem. It had this very soft-hearted and cowardly swordsman character that could never fully show his ability. Completely useless and annoying, he'd take to his heels during battle. An innocent boy who doesn't know how to hate people. Even when he gets bullied, he's a frustrating crybaby who doesn't even think of fending for himself. The cancer character of the protagonist's party, and this character's body is where our story's main protagonist reincarnated, the rabbit of the divine sword arts, Du Kun Wu. At this moment, he was sweating heavily, wondering why he had to be such a cancer character if he just only reincarnated, as if it didn't suffice, he would end up in the same class as the dangerous character, Yon Hanul. No matter how hard Kun Wu cried, he believed facing Hanul was beyond his ability. He was venting his annoyance in the cabinet inside their room and one of his classmates was confused about what was going on to him. He didn't know that his teacher called his name since he was busy staring angrily at Hanwell. He was sure that this little girl was the girl who became the Witch of Calamity in the Brave Hearts, a character who seemed to bear the suffering of the whole world. As soon as she was born, she was abandoned by her parents. She became a victim of other people's mockery, and she was regarded as an eyesore, not receiving even an ounce of affection from others. She lived a lonely and weary life. All of this happened due to a mana disaster. Born with mutated DNA, she was an Ain. Hyun Wu has heard that an Ain's appearance and DNA don't match their parents still so, abandoning her for that is too much. Thus, he understands why Hanul became the Witch of Calamity. But he still can't sit by and let the world's downfall happen. And the best solution he was thinking of was to get rid of Hanul before she became a calamity. But then, he didn't want to do that so he was hoping he could find another way. Luckily, his teacher approached him, telling him to go to a classmate he wanted to sit next to. At this moment, he decided to change Hanul the way she thinks by getting close to her. Hanul in the game, because of her unfortunate circumstances and environment, resented the world. However, if it's now, a time when the game's story hasn't begun, Kun Wu believes that his actions may change the future. Among the villains of this game, Yon Hanul is the one who possesses the ability to destroy the world. In that case, Kun Wu decided to help her not be pessimistic about the world. He approached the little girl who was busy reading a book. Hanul looked at him and was shocked to see someone talk with her without any signs of judgment or fear. Can I sit next to you? Kun Wu asked which surprised Hanul the most. Kun Wu at the same time was thinking that if his plan would progress, he could bring Hanul to his side and reinforce his strength. Five years are left until the start of the game's story. So he plans to become friends with Yon Hanul before enrolling in the academy. After guiding her to the right path, he believes he can just turn her from a calamity to a blessing. After asking Hanul if he could sit right beside her, 
He immediately grabbed the chair and sat while telling Hanul that they would be a partner from today on and he wished that both of them would take care of each other. He introduced himself to Hanul with a wide smile on his face while Hanul was still speechless. Right at this moment, he deduces that he has now become the mid-level boss's childhood friend. His main goal now is to change the Witch of Calamity, Yon Hanul, who resented the world, to a blessing. After class, Hanul was about to leave, but then, Kyumu was still staring at her, wondering how he could get closer to her. Hanul went back and asked Kyunwu a favor to stop looking at her. Kyunwu didn't deny it and just apologized. But a part of him feels awkward as he realizes that he has been staring at Hanul for too long which only makes the lady uncomfortable. Hanul continued to leave but Kyunwu was still staring at her. He wanted to stop thinking much and wanted to ask Hanul directly to come to his house. He looked at the tail of Hanul, wondering if this tail was real. He was startled when Hanul called him once more. Hanul went back to him for the second time. He then asked her what was wrong and she asked why he was sitting next to her. He smiled and answered a statement that he believed was a better one, that is, of course, it's because I want to be friends with you. Hanul was dumbfounded. She blushed and her ears popped up. She asked Kyunwu why it should be her. Kyunwu then answered that there was no reason, he just wanted them to be friends, nothing else. At the same time, he was surprised to see Hanul's ears suddenly pop up. Hanul felt shy. She was stuttering while saying that it was weird to see someone wanting to be friends with someone like her. She knows that Kyunwu is someone from a famous swordsmanship family so she cannot think of a good reason why he wants to get close to her. Kyunwu became silent for a moment as he felt the sadness of Hanul. Hanul's ears bend down and Kyunwu suddenly thinks of an idea. He then mentioned his rabbit's name, Mongshil, while pointing his index finger at Hanul. He told the lady that she was as cute as a rabbit that he had. He widely smiles as added that he really likes rabbits so much and for him, Hanul is like one of those rabbits. Instead of being happy, it seemed like Hanul was upset. She was shaking and her face was so red. She screamed angrily at Kyunwu, saying that she was not a rabbit. She then ran away and later then Kyunwu realized that he offended Hanul. He called her name and apologized to her. Hanul stopped but she never gave any response. But after a few seconds, she told Kyunwu, Then, see you tomorrow. Her face is still red and she then continues to run away. With what she said, Kyunwu deduces that she wasn't mad at him. Kyunwu then decided to leave. He walked outside the school and he could not still believe that he had come inside the world of the game. If this world is still a game, then he wondered why he cannot see his status window although he's not a player in the game right now. He looked behind him to check if there were a lot of students inside. He then extended his hand and uttered, status window. Fortunately, the status window he was looking for finally appeared. He took a closer look at it and was surprised to see that his ability was pretty good. He belongs to Rayon Elementary School, with a possessed gift which is alias, and his evasion instinct is a rabbit. His physical strength is 37 points, 34 points for muscle strength, 32 points endurance, 43 points agility, 30 points mana, and 25 points luck. Just by looking at his status, he knows that it is actually not bad at all. But then, he cannot explain why he was getting constantly bullied for his ability. With this status and ability, he believes that it is a fresh start with a good life knowing that it can't even be compared to his previous one. Meanwhile, he arrived at his home. His house in this world isn't a normal one. It was spacious and had a chandelier inside. He removed his shoes and declared that he was home. His lovely mom then approached him, asking him how his school was. Hyun Woo was silent. He suddenly hugged his mom so tight and his mother became worried for him thinking that something had happened to her son in the school. She then asked him what was wrong but Kyunwu still didn't speak. It turned out that Kyunwu was just happy. He doesn't want to live in his past life, nor should he think like he's living in a game. He wants to live on as do Kyunwu wholly. It's nothing. I just felt grateful to have you, he said. His mother was so happy. She told him to say everything if something happened to him. She then ordered Kyunwu to wash himself while she prepared for a snack before he went to the sword training academy. Kyunwu then rushed to his room. He was very determined to do something to live as do Kyunwu. The thing that he needs the most right now is the Beast King style, a sword technique that represents a prestigious swordsmanship family like them. Like a lion that is reigning over all the beasts, it's focused on the tip of the sword. It's also a sword technique that made do Kyunwu the greatest swordsman. When he entered his room, he then called his male rabbit, Mongshil. Mongshil was inside the cage. He gets him and remembers Hanul since he really believes that his rabbit is similar to Hanul. He suddenly became silent, thinking of completely mastering the best king style. After eating his snack made by his mother, he then went to the sword training academy and he felt that he was too early since there were only a few kids inside. These sword training academies operate in several cities, and people inside the family learn conventional swordsmanship instead of the best king style. That is why so many people attend this training academy. At this moment, all the students stare in the same direction. 
Tianwu was confused as to why so he decided to check it out and he found out that it was because of Du Xian, his cousin, the Du family sword deity lightning flower. She is two years older than Kyunwo. She is the most promising prodigy among all the children of the current Du family sword deity. In the game, she is a student of Jumgang Academy. She proceeds to become the strongest swordsman after graduating and becomes a strong ally of Du Kyunwo. At this moment, Kyunwu is clueless as to why Sian went to the sword training academy. It is not that she can't come to this training ground, it's more about this being a sword training academy of the Du family. He smiled while hanging his cloth thinking that they'll see each other often soon once he gets stronger. For now, he wanted to focus on practicing the Beast King style. He then grabbed his wooden sword to start practicing a sword technique. He started swinging the sword and imagined himself fighting with someone. He casts the Beast King style, not just once, twice, thrice, but instead several times. He is amazed by the way he moves which also makes him think would impress Sian. He was having fun as it felt nice for him to be sweaty so much. While he was practicing, three kids were looking at him. The two of these kids laughed at him and said that a rabbit was now practicing too. The kid in the middle is Wu Jumdong. On the left side is Wu Yundong, while on the right side is Wu Dongdong. They were the identical triplets. They are the extra characters called the Cerberus in this game. And, they're the kids who bully Kyunwu. They do that because of Kyunwu's cousin, Du Sungwu's influence. While they were mocking at Kyunwu, Kyunwu overheard them. He stares at them with anger as he is so frustrated. It was because it was his first time not being able to focus. Of course, these three kids were not the only reason why he couldn't concentrate. There's a reason why he's angry right now, and that is because of him letting these three kids bully him. He remembers everything that happened to the real Du Kyunwu in his past life. These three kids believe that the head of the Du family is ashamed of Kyunwu. They also said that Kyunwu is just a disgrace to his family. The only thing Du Kyunwu could do back then is to cry. He cannot fight back with their harassment because he hates hurting people. But now, the current Du Kyunwu doesn't want the humiliation to happen again. The triplets tease him that his swinging had no point at all, and they suddenly challenge Kyunwu to spar against each other. Kyunwu believes that the human body is not weak at all, so he confidently accepts the challenge without any hesitation. When their spar started inside the training room, the other kids watched them. As expected, Kyunwu applied the Beast King style basic technique, specifically the second form, charging stance. Surprisingly, because of this technique, he easily attacked Jumdong, and Jumdong flew away and slammed into the wall. His brothers are worried for him and immediately check on him if he's fine. Jumdong was in pain. He was staring at Kyunwu and saw a different aura of him. You don't expect this to be the end, do you? What are you doing? Hurry, pick up your swords, and stand up. Kyunwu said. The three become scared of him and they can now see the changes of Kyunwu who was known as weak back then but now suddenly became brave enough to fight back. Kyunwu stood in front of them, telling Jumdong not to exaggerate the pain and to stand up knowing that no one could die from his attack. I, who has been hit by you all in the past, can assert it. He said which annoys the three and calls him crazy. They then scared Kyunwu that someone was backing them and wouldn't let him slide for what he did to Jumdong. Kyunwu believes that these three kids were referring to his cousin Du Sungwu and he confidently told them that Sungwu cannot protect them at all. The three were dumbfounded. They recalled the time when they were peacefully dreaming of becoming hunters. Kyunwu's cousin, Du Sungwu, knows the dreams of these kids and he tells them that the fees for hunter education are too high and unreasonable. Jumdong was holding a piece of paper about hunter education and he read on the paper that the talented one would get a sponsor so the fees of the education would be free. Upon reading it, Sungwu then asked them if they wanted to get sponsored. Of course, the three kids wanted it so much. Lucky for them, Sungwu offered them a sponsorship. He said that he heard that these three kids enrolled in the same school as Kyunwu so he believed that the three would see Kyunwu often. Now, Kyunwu was aware that he was humiliated back then because of his cousin. He also knew that he was definitely just letting himself get bullied and hit before but now, he was eager to not let it happen again. The triplets were scared of him since he reminded them that he is also part of the Du family so it is easy for him to remove these three from their family's sponsoring list if he asks his family. There's no way you thought that he was the only one who could, right? He asked, but none of the three dared to answer and they were clueless about how Kyunwu instantly changed and reversed the situation. Fortunately for them, the trainer came to them and angrily asked them what was going on. He reminded the four students that he repeated so many times to not spar without permission. The trainer blamed Kyunwu so Kyunwu got annoyed and pointed his finger at the triplets. The trainer was hesitant to believe that it was because of the triplets. Kyunwu put his wooden sword on his shoulder and his one hand on his waist while staring at their trainer. You want me to stay still and endure while they pick on me when I'm one of the dues as you have mentioned. He said. The trainer then asked the triplets if they really picked on Kyunwu first but the kids were afraid to tell the truth. They were silent for a moment, thinking if they should answer or not. And since the trainer was waiting for their answer, they decided to tell the truth. They admitted that they were the ones who started the fight first and cursed Kyunwu. 
The trainer was shocked upon hearing it since he never heard from these kids that they fight someone first. Tian Wu was smiling behind him and he felt refreshed now that he bravely faced the three kids. The next few days, he went to his school early in the morning. As he entered his respective classroom, he instantly saw Han Wu reading a book again. His eyes sparkled while staring at the lady. He walked toward his chair and greeted Han Wu. Han Wu looked back at him and greeted back. Her face blushed again so she covered it with the book she was holding. Tian Wu went to his table and was very determined to try his best to befriend Han Wu today. You're early today, and reading books again. Do you like reading that much? He asked, and Han Wu was stuttering as she answered yes and also asked Kyun Wu if he also liked reading. Kyun Wu answered that he's not really into reading but he's into web novels. Han Wu was confused as to why Kyun Wu joined the book club if he was not into reading. Kyun Wu then honestly replied that it was because of her who signed up for the book club. Han Wu was surprised with his answer. She cannot explain what to feels. To vanish the awkwardness between the two, Kyun Wu asked her if she also liked reading web novels. As per Han Wu, she also likes web novels, but she doesn't have much pocket money so she could only read the free ones. At this moment, Kyun Wu then remembered that Han Wu was living in the orphanage. He then asked her if she also liked drama just to change their topic. And Han Wu answered that she likes luxury house and at the same time, she was shocked about why Kyun Wu knew that she liked dramas. Kyun Wu then said that it was because she already mentioned it during her introduction. Han Wu was thrilled by the fact that Kyun Wu didn't forget it at all. She was also confused as to why Kyun Wu talked to her casually. She concludes that it might be because Kyun Wu doesn't have friends too just like her. She was sure that Kyun Wu must only befriend her out of fascination since she's inane. She suddenly felt sad thinking that after some time, Kyun Wu too would lose interest in her just like the others. She sunk her face on her table while Kyun Wu stares at her ears closely. But, he doesn't want to ask a lot to handle thinking that the lady won't like it. He slightly smiled and remembered his rabbit again. He then realizes that he had a video of Mongsul on his phone so he let Hanul watch it. Hanul was surprised upon seeing it. Kyun Wu didn't play the video yet but he informed the lady that he took the video yesterday. Hanul then asked him to let her watch it. Kyun Wu played the video and it was seen on the video that Mongsul was jumping excitedly which means it was in a good mood, and this is what he called Binky. After watching the video, Hanul was so happy and said that Mongsul was so cute. She watches the video again and seeing her smile makes Kyun Wu happy. He then asked her if she wanted to come over to his house to see Mongsul personally. Hanul answered yes but she suddenly flinched when it sinks in on her mind. Then, let's go and play in my house after school, Kyun Wu said. As usual, Hanul's face becomes reddish again. She wanted to refuse since she didn't want to relive this again but she didn't know how to say it. In the end, she went to Kyun Wu's house after class. Upon seeing a luxury house like the drama she was watching, she was so amazed. When they entered the gate, Kyun Wu's mother came out and said, You're Kyun Wu's friend, Han Wu, aren't you? Welcome. Kyun Wu greeted his mother while Han Wu was speechless. She remembered the day when she came to her friend's house back then but was forced to leave and told their daughter that she was not allowed to play with Ains. Because of that, she told herself not to befriend anyone. But now, she could see that Kyun Wu's mother was different. The lady was very happy to see her since it was the first time Kyun Wu brought a friend over. She even said that she couldn't imagine how happy she was. Have fun here, Han Wu, she added sincerely. Kyun Wu then asked his mother a favor to cook some tea diokbaki for them to eat. Han Wu was shy and she was afraid thinking that what happened to her back then with her friend might also happen now. Kyun Wu suddenly grabbed her hand and invited her to come inside. Han Wu was surprised. She clearly knows that Kyun Wu's curiosity about her won't last long. But still, she doesn't want to let go of his hand. They entered inside the house and Han Wu was speechless upon seeing the clean and spacious mansion of Kyun Wu's family. After a few minutes, the Tidi Akbaki is already prepared and the lady lets them eat first before playing. After that, they then went to Kyun Wu's rabbit and played with it. Kyun Wu was so happy to see the genuine happiness of Han Wu. The night came and at this hour, Kyun Wu's father came home from work but Han Wu already left. Kyun Wu and his mother then approached his father. His father then handed his blazer to their maid and asked why Yi Yoon, Kyun Wu's little sister, was rolling on the floor while crying. Yi Yoon was screaming that she wanted to see her rabbit sister. Kyun Wu then informed his father that he had a friend who came over but Yi Yoon didn't see her since she wasn't home at all which is why she was mad. Yi Yoon was really crying but Kyun Wu couldn't do anything either since Han Ol needed to go home. At this time, Kyun Wu suddenly asked his father if they could spar after dinner. His father was shocked since it was the first time Kyun Wu asked him to spar. He clenched his fist and his eyes sparkled and said that he was wondering when he'd be able to play with his son, and he's now genuinely happy that it's happening now that Kyun Wu is already in the fifth grade. He removed the buttons of his shirt while Kyun Wu informed him that it was because he wanted to see how much he improved and he also wanted to experience actual combat. His father was confused, and he then cleared his father's confusion by saying that he was eager to learn since he wanted to kill some monsters just like what hunters were doing. 
After an hour, they went to their training room to start the spar. Before they could start, his father asked once more why he suddenly wanted to spar at this hour. You don't need to be impatient, it's not your time to face the real thing yet. His father stated. Kyunwu was silent, but he was aware that he, the current Du Kyunwu, would enter the Du family's Sword Academy headquarters five years from now. He will inevitably encounter crises while solving various incidents alongside the protagonist, Kang Hanbyul. For that, he needs to get a good grasp on actual combat. He was sure that the other kids in the Du family already had their combat experience so he was aware that he was way behind compared to them, which is why he needed to catch up to them as soon as possible. He didn't give his father an answer. He was just staring at his hand. His father is waiting for his honest answer, but since he didn't give any, his father thinks that it may be because of what happened to him with the triplets in the Sword Training Academy. Kyun Wu was shocked as he never thought that his father knew it. His father then said that he heard that Kyun Wu fought at the Sword Training Academy, and one of the kids he fought got hurt really badly. However, Kyun Wu said that he did nothing wrong. The way he spoke, Kyun Wu felt that his father seemed to be interested in the truth rather than scolding him. He told his father that he would never fight for no reason. He added that he had been taught since a long time ago that the sword from the divine swordsmanship of the Du family is meant to protect and save people, and he has taken that to his heart. He wouldn't have that notion had he not thought of his past life, the things he has been through in his previous life, and thinking about the future changed his mindset. He told his father that he should be able to protect himself before the other people since he never heard of someone who couldn't protect themselves but was able to protect others. His father then asked if it was his reason for fighting the triplets, and he answered yes and reasoned out that he could not only protect himself but others as well once he became strong enough. And for that, he knows he needs to go kill some actual monsters to train himself more. His father smiled upon seeing his determination. He then said that Kyunwu wasn't wrong the way he was thinking. For him, Kyunwu's reasoning is completely valid. He patted Kyunwu's head and said that his son changed a lot. Would you help me? Kyunwu asked with excitement, and his father answered, Of course, I'll help you, but I have a condition. Kyunwu then asked what it was and his father suddenly attacked the ground with the wooden sword and told Kyunwu that he must prove that he had developed enough skill to face a real monster, that is his condition to spar with Kyunwu. Not just that, there's one more thing. He won't use mana and he won't move more than five steps so Kyunwu should feel free to pounce. Kyunwu then asked his father if he would also use the Beast King style and his father replied that he would only use the basics of that style. With the condition his father gave him, he knew that it was a way to say that he shouldn't hesitate to hurt someone with a sword. Then, come on, his father said with a smile. Now, Kyunwu was determined to do what his father said. He pointed his sword to his father and charged then started the spar using the knowledge he had. His father easily blocked his sword causing him to bounce back but he never surrendered. He charged back to his father once again and for the second time, his father blocked his weapon again. The same thing happened on his third try. His father teases him that his move won't work. Not until Kyunwu's aura changes. Kyunwu charged at him with a serious look. He almost hit his father and wasn't able to block his sword but managed to dodge. His father is almost outbalanced so Kyunwu sees this as an opportunity to hit his father. Unfortunately, his father still managed to block his sword. His father smiled and predicted what technique Kyunwu would use. But then, when he swung his sword, planning to block Kyunwu's sword, it turned out that his prediction was wrong. He is flustered then realizes that Kyunwu was able to hit his waist. Kyunwu then bounced back while his father was holding his painful waist. This brat, I let him hit me, but how can he hit me this hard? His father uttered in confusion, so that you can acknowledge my ability, Kyunwu answered. Because of it, his father agreed that Kyunwu really grown up for not hesitating to hit him. Kyunwu then asked him if he passed, and his father said yes. They then sleep after finishing their spar, and the next day, Kyunwu and his father decide to go to the clan academy. Before they could ride to their car, they waved goodbye to his mother and his little sister and informed his mother that they would come back before dinner. Are you sure about sending him there? Don't you think our Kyunwu is too young? Isn't it too early for him? His mother said, and his little sister at the same time was begging them to let her go with them. He and his father were speechless about the overreaction of his mother since they both believed that it is fine for him to be sent to the clan academy. His mother then reminded him to be careful always and not overdo everything. Yes mom, you don't need to worry about it. I'll be back later, he answered. They then rode to their car and headed their way to the clan academy. While traveling, Kyunwu remembered someone. According to the game settings, the world has become dramatically unstable since the time of calamity change. As a result, the dimensional distortion phenomenon occurred over time and influenced the world heavily. It happened as monsters started pouring out from the distorted dimension, leading to a dungeon being transformed on the other side. In this process, when the distorted dimensions of different worlds meet, a gate is created. 
If that phenomenon isn't resolved in time, Kyunwu believes that the world inside the gate will explode and be scattered into reality. It is called an outbreak, a phenomenon when the world in the gate explodes and scatters out. It is different from dungeons. If humanity fails to conquer within the time limit, it will have a significant impact on the ending. Kyunwu was aware humanity also needs to pay attention to the gate erosion rate to reach the desired endings. It is also necessary for character growth as well. Let's grab the key first after reaching. His father suddenly said so his conclusion was cut off. He then asked his father where the gate key was kept, and his father replied that it was kept in the warehouse. Once they clear a gate, they obtain a gate key with which they can clear it again. It was created by the game developers for players who wanted to re-clear the gate. At this point, Kyunwu deduces that the setting is in function after his reincarnation too. After almost an hour, they had arrived to their destination. The building was so tall. And according to Kyunwu's father, this is also where he works, the so-called Regulus clan located in the Sanpagu branch. The Regulus clan was founded by the first patriarch of the Divine Sword Tao clan during the Great Cataclysm, and it currently has many branches established throughout the country. Dungeons, gates, and monster habitats are managed by the government typically require a hunter's license for entry. But, since Kyunwu doesn't have a license yet, he won't be able to enter the gate. If it's in a clan where his father is the branch manager, things will be different. He won't be bound by the restriction. With his father's help, he was confident that he could enter the gate owned by the clan easily. Unfortunately, someone ran toward him. A lady suddenly hugged him and there were people so excited knowing that he was the branch manager's son, and it was also their first time seeing him. There's also a worker behind him who says that Kyunwu is so cute and is lucky that he doesn't resemble his father. Ladies were kissing him and pinched his cheeks. He was annoyed but he could not get away from them since the workers are too many. After showing the workers giggles to Kyunwu, Kyunwu was full of kiss marks and he was sweating and still annoyed. He was behind his father and someone asked his father if they were going through a gate together. A lady worker then instructed his father to go to room number two. Kyunwu was wiping his cheeks and heard his father telling him to follow. His father was already holding the key and the key color was white. Gates are classified into seven different colors based on the difficulty and the grade. Starting from the easiest grade, white. They progress sequentially as gray, yellow, green, red, and blue. And then, there is also the black key, which is the most difficult level. For Kyunwu's father, white is enough for his son. Kyunwu was okay with it since he could not argue with his father, but deep inside him, he wanted to at least get the gray key. They then headed to gate number two and according to Kyunwu's father, this gate is just an artificial gate. If they insert the key obtained from the dungeon warehouse into the gate, it will open instantly. Kyunwu was amazed upon seeing the artificial gate in person knowing that only large clans can afford to have it because of the maintenance costs. Now, he feels like he's getting a new understanding of his family's power. He turned his head around as he heard his father call his name. You're about to enter a gate. Are you really ready? Think carefully now. Because once you enter, you cannot come out until you conquer the gate. His father stated. And up until this point, Kyunwu is very determined and confidently answers yes to his father since he has already thought about it enough. His father slightly smiled upon seeing his determination but a part of him was also worried. And if I can't succeed, dad will do it for me, right? He asked, and his father answered, yeah, I got it. Even if you fail, dad will have your back, so don't push yourself too hard. Don't needlessly get in trouble to avoid getting scolded by your mother. His father then inserted the key to the gate and the gate slowly opened. A silhouette then appeared the moment it widely opened. Kyunwu bravely entered and it turned out that it was a cave inside. There were also pink crystals inside. He continued to walk, observe the surroundings, and suddenly received a notification from the system to declare that he had entered the gate of the pink crystal cave, a white grade object. In this cave, he needed to defeat 15 rank.01 goblins. It was too simple for Kyunwu and he concludes that it might be because it is just a white grade gate. He was thinking of where he could find the goblins then he suddenly felt suspicious movement nearby. He immediately got his sword and prepared himself to fight. He also told himself to be cautious since the gate was very dangerous. He was waiting for the goblins to appear. He warned himself to be careful not to be attacked by goblins. And to his surprise, his father is already standing in front of him while the goblins are tied by a rope. He approached his father and asked if his father was the one who captured all the goblins. His father answered yes and informed Kyunwu that these were the goblins who were in the cave. Kyunwu counted the goblins and it turned out that it's a total of 15 goblins. It matches the number of goblins specified in the objective. If he defeats these goblins, he can conquer the gate. He gulped and positioned himself, informing his father that he was now ready to defeat the goblins. His father then instructed him to deal with the goblins one by one since Kyunwu can't take on multiple of them at once knowing that he's a newbie. Also, he doesn't want Kyunwu to let his guard down even though these goblins are the weakest one among the group of monsters. 
He then let go of one of the goblins and the goblin then charged at Kyunwu with killing intent. Kyunwu was aware that these goblins were vicious creatures. Although he had knowledge of the game from his past life, as a first-generation swordsman from the Divine Sword Tao clan, he also had knowledge about monsters. He knew that goblins understood the situation as well and knew that the only way they could survive was by attacking him. The goblin charging at him grabbed a pink crystal, planning to use it as a weapon rather than a real one. Kyunwu grits his teeth thinking that he might end up being counterattacked if he's not careful. In a real battle, he has to be prepared for everything. He kneeled on the ground and his scary aura emerged since he cast his Beast King style, specifically the fifth basic form, Stance of Penetration. Kyunwu focused on himself. He then pointed his sword at the goblin's head and it was struck the moment this goblin got closer to him. The goblin's blood then splattered and unintentionally kneeled on the ground and fell. It let go of the pink crystal and Kyunwu's father felt relieved knowing that Kyunwu survived. Kyunwu grips his weapon and proudly tells his father that the first one goblin is down. As a party member of the main character Kang Hanbyul, Du Kyunwu has one restriction. There is a setting called Gift in this game. Among the passive skills that reflect the character, Du Kyunwu's gift is Evasion Instinct. It was both Du Kyunwu's strength and weakness. At first glance, it seems like a useful gift. While recalling his ability, his father cuts off the tie on the two goblins to let them fight against Kyunwu. As far as Kyunwu remembered, Evasion Instinct is literally the ability to move his body instinctively, when he feels a crisis of life to avoid an attack. It's a useful ability for Du Kyunwu who wields a sword, but the real Du Kyunwu back then refuses to obey the command and avoids the attack. This gift was getting rejected due to Du Kyunwu's fearful and fragile character. Because of this gift, players generally didn't include Du Kyunwu in their party unless it was an unavoidable situation. The evasion instinct also made Du Kyunwu defy player commands, causing frustration when players used him. However, there is an event that makes him awaken. In the later part of the story, Du Kyunwu becomes completely different. During that day, he vows that he won't be the one who receives protection anymore and vows to fight those people who mocked him. After receiving the awakening, Du Kyunwu gains control over his gift. Characters who awaken late become remarkably strong morale boosters. Later, Du Kyunwu shows his overwhelming ability to defeat the enemy by avoiding most of the enemy's attacks. While the current Kyunwu was fighting against low-level goblins, he remembered that raising himself well could make the later part of the game easier. But he knows it is still a long way. And if he just does nothing but wait, he knows it'll be too late so he doesn't want to just sit still and wait. He jumped away from the goblins while the goblins were too greedy to unalive him. At this point, he was eager to advance his awakening. He concludes that it might be impossible if it's just a game but the fact is that is still a reality. When he played the game he didn't find any situation like triggering the awakening in the later part of the story, so he thinks it must not be hard to awaken early on. Therefore, he wants to push himself to the limit. Meanwhile, Kyunwu managed to eliminate a total of almost half of the goblins. He asked his father to untie another goblin but his father insisted on taking a rest. But then, he said that he was fine and that he didn't want to rest until he eliminated the 15 goblins. His father sighed and said that he would untie four goblins at the same time since Kyunwu insisted. He then untied four goblins and these goblins rushed to Kyunwu like they were starving. Shockingly, the goblins passed through him. He turned around and concluded that it might be a goblin's diversion tactic. He clearly remembered that the two of the goblins were above but he didn't know where's the other two. He then felt someone launching an attack from behind. He stood still and his body suddenly moved at a fast speed. He avoided the attack launched by the goblin so the attack exploded at the pink crystal. Kyunwu was shocked knowing that his body suddenly moved without his will. He was sure that it was the gift that suddenly activated. The evasion instinct senses the crisis so he tells himself that he has to trust this instinct. He knows that the first thing he needs to do is to get rid of the goblins. Because of his instinct, he found the whereabouts of the four goblins. One goblin launched an attack and Kyunwu knew it was fine because the evasion instinct was active. He managed to dodge which made the goblin mad at him. Kyunwu jumped and charged at the goblin who was holding a bow. He then instantly killed it using the Beast King style basic second form, attack stance. The other two goblins are waiting for him at his perfect landing point. Before attacking them, he compresses and rotates the mana within his body, then loads the mana that has emerged from the heart into the sword. By doing that, he was sure that he could wield the sword that was wrapped by mana. He then attacked the goblins using his Beast King style attack first form lion crush cut, and both goblins were cut in half and died. He landed on the ground and declared that only one over four goblins left. He informed his father that he would now go straight to the last goblin but his father told him that he didn't need to rush to avoid getting hurt. He then said that he was fine since he was sure that he could do it. His father then told him to be careful since it was the last goblin amongst the four so Kyunwu should be more cautious. Kyunwu answered yes and chased the goblin. His father waited for him to come back. 
Hyunwoo continued eliminating the goblins without resting until he completed the mission since he managed to eliminate the 15 goblins in total and gathered all the corpses. At this moment, his father realizes that he should just believe in Kyunwoo. Kyunwoo was panting heavily. His father called him to inform him about something. But then, Kyunwoo received a notification. It was said that he cleared the gate and an exit gate will be generated around where the gate key will appear. The gate will close again in 24 hours. A silhouette appeared above them and they clearly saw the key. It then landed in the hand of Kyunwoo and he was hoping that he get at least the gray one. Unfortunately, it is still white which is the easiest one. He grits his teeth out of disappointment and his father knows that he is upset so he taps Kyunwoo's back and reminds him that he easily cleared the gate. His father was so proud of him and even widely smiled at him. Kyunwoo was staring at the key in his hand. He was aware that he couldn't use this dungeon to practice until the cooldown was over, and as the gate closed, he knew that the power inside it was depleted. The gate will become active again after it's done replenishing its mana. He was thinking of what he should do since he hadn't fully awakened the gift yet. Honestly, I was very surprised. I thought you would stop with four of them, but in the end, you managed to get five of them easily, his father said. His father shook him and proudly asked him who his father was. His father then invited him to clean up for now and go back home together. But, Kyunwoo is still unsatisfied. His father asked him to hand over the key and he was stuttering and shyly asked his father if there was still another gate where he could practice now. I feel like I will get awakened, so I think it's such a pity if I just go back like this. If there is much time left, shouldn't we try clearing another gate? He added. His father was hesitant but Kyunwoo still begged to let him deal with something more challenging than the white gate. He widely smiled and told his father that it would be okay to go inside the gray gate as he was confident that he could handle rank 2 monsters. Son, your mom will kill me, if she knows I let you do that, she will surely kill me. His father replied. But still, Kyunwoo forced him and reasoned out that everyone would still die in the end. His father understood that he wanted to push himself, but he believed that fighting two rank monsters was too much for Kyunwoo for now. But he knows that Kyunwoo would manage if it was still in the white grade gate. Hyunwoo then concludes that his father would still allow him as long as he would still choose the white grade gate. His father smiled at him and permitted him to practice again for the last time since he's also a swordsman so he understands why Kyunwoo begged him. He also told Kyunwoo that he won't get anything if he becomes so ambiguous. Kyunwoo was so happy with his father's decision and he then gave thanks to him. One thing and for most, his father reminded him that he would step in whenever Kyunwoo was in danger. They exited the gate number 2 and went in front of gate 3. Before entering, Kyunwoo's father informed him that not all white grade gates are the same so it is going to be tough in this dungeon. He pointed to the person behind them and this old man would be Kyunwoo's support in case Kyunwoo needed one. Kyunwoo knew that support was a dungeon specialized for magic supporting hunters and usually healed or gave buffs to assist the hunters. His father also reminded him to be careful since monsters may rush in immediately after entering the dungeon. After giving him warnings, his father then declared that they should now enter. Upon entering the gate, the same thing happened. A notification popped up to declare that Kyunwoo already entered the gate successfully. It is still the white grade pink crystal cave. The cleared condition is to still subjugate a total of 15 ranks.01 goblins. Since everything was the same, Kyunwoo was confused about how this dungeon was still the same world as he just fought earlier which was gate number 2. He was looking around, wondering where the monsters were, but a sudden attack happened near him. He was startled and he didn't know what just happened. The system window shows up to give him a warning that numerous monsters have appeared. Most of the goblins were behind the crystals. There are a total of 4 regular goblin, 7 swordsman goblin, 3 archer goblin, and 1 mage goblin. Kyunwoo was nervous since he never expected that the monsters in this gate were monsters with jobs. Just by this, it already drives him crazy but it made him realize that grey grade gate is also scarier than this white grade gate number 3. At this moment, the evasion instinct was activated. His gift controlled his body. He told himself to run away since he didn't want to die here. While he was standing in fear facing the goblins, his father and the support with them were watching him from above. The support concludes that this gate would be so hard for Kyunwoo and he asked Kyunwoo's father if he really let Kyunwoo fight alone. Kyunwoo's father didn't respond at all. He was sure that Kyunwoo changed recently. As far as he remembered, Kyunwoo in the past was really easy to get startled by small things, but recently, he thinks Kyunwoo is different since he won't easily get startled by trivial things like before. He believes that Kyunwoo now is stronger and for him, it isn't a bad change. Kyunwoo grew up and became a kind-hearted kid but he didn't fit the fierce competition in the Divine Swordsman Du family. Due to his kind heater nature, he always hesitated to hurt others, even if it would put himself in danger. He is a son who smiles happily while receiving his first sword. At some point whenever he held a sword, he would cry happily. His father knew that many of Kyunwoo's peers mocked him by calling him a rabbit. Whenever he hears that, he wants to step in but he can't. 
Now, he cannot explain why his son changed now that he's already a fifth grader. His wife told him that Kyunwoo changed because he liked someone in his class. But for him, he believes there must be another reason. While thinking about it, he recalled the time when someone from the Sword Training Academy contacted him, specifically, the trainer of Kyunwoo. The trainer informed him that Kyunwoo fought with other kids under the pretext of sparring. He cannot believe it knowing that his son wouldn't do such a thing and if his son would do that, he knows there must be a reason behind it. Because of the way he reacts, the trainer then believes that Kyunwoo didn't inform his father about the incident. Kyunwoo's father argued with the trainer by saying that his son isn't someone who hurts other kids without a reason. The trainer then said that Kyunwoo played as usual the same as the other kids and he added that it is natural for children of that age to get absorbed in their own strength and play around. Kyunwoo's father was mad after he heard from the trainer that his son had been bullied by other kids. He was full of anger as he could not believe that someone from the Divine Swordsman of the Dew family received such a treatment at the Sword Training Academy. He was shaking while asking the trainer why he kept it for so long and who those bullies were. The trainer then tells him the truth. He then realizes that his son Kyunwoo received such humiliation just because he doesn't have much power in their family. He then called his third older brother, Du Bumjun, Du Sungwoo's father, to inform him that Kyunwoo was bullied by his son. But then, Bumjun just laughed as he could not believe it. For him, his son and Kyunwoo were just playing around. Still, Kyunwoo's father won't believe it so Bumjun decides to tell his son Sungwoo to apologize to Kyunwoo and tell him not to do it again. Bumjun also said that Junwoo must have had a hard time because of his cowardly personality. While Kyunwoo's father can't do anything, Kyunwoo is just enduring the bullying alone. That day when Kyunwoo said that he wanted to experience a real combat, his father instantly understood why. He was so happy and proud of his son thinking that his son Kyunwoo decided not to endure it any longer. He was also proud of Kyunwoo when Kyunwoo managed to clear the second gate. During that time, he admitted to himself that Kyunwoo was doing better than he expected since he first thought that his son might panic inwardly and be rushed, but then ended up handling the situation calmly and well. He slightly smiled knowing that his child was a kid prodigy since a long time ago. Although Kyunwoo's skills haven't gone anywhere, his father believes that he shouldn't let him grow calmly since Kyunwoo is still 12 years old after all. At this time, Kyunwoo was running away from the goblins. One goblin hit his arm causing his blood to splatter. His father grits his teeth thinking that his misjudgment will put Kyunwoo in danger. Kyunwoo was panicking while the support thought that it was now the time to step in. He could see that Kyunwoo had run out of energy and would possibly be caught by a monster. Unfortunately, Kyunwoo was cornered. He pointed his sword to the goblins. His father thought that Kyunwoo might be disappointed if he would step in. At the same, he concludes that Kyunwoo can do to this extent knowing that his son is quite good now at his age. In the end, he decided to just encourage his son. Hongchul, prepare the protection shield magic. We might use it anytime. The moment the goblin attacks Kyunwoo, we charge in all at once. I'll kill the mage goblin first, and you use protection shield magic and Kyunwoo while avoiding the archer goblin. He said to his support comrade. But he suddenly paused as he could observe that his son Kyunwoo had a rigid movement because of fear. However, Kyunwoo's eyes are different, seemed like he wasn't in the middle of fear. Kyunwoo stomped on the ground and his father was shocked to witness how he easily killed the other goblins using the Beast King style fourth form, Lion Needle Recursion Attack. A few minutes ago, Kyunwoo continued to run away from the goblins. He knows that he is now in danger since the goblins' coordination is so good that there's no opening for him to attack. In addition, he can't keep running away as well, or else, he would stay the same rabbit do Kyunwoo. He positioned himself and his sword thinking that Beast King style first form should work, however, the most annoying part for him was that his evasion instinct instantly activated so he could not control his own body. Also, the voice ringing in his head since he faced the goblin keeps interfering. He knows that he would possibly die if he didn't do anything. And he was thinking that everything he have done so far will be a waste if he ends up here. The evasion instinct restricted his actions and made his body move without his will. He doesn't want to run away but his body moves on its own. He concludes that what he feels now is also the feeling of the real Du Kyunwoo's feeling before he awakens. His body is divided between will and instinct. He feels like his body is going to rip into two pieces. One goblin jumped toward him with killing intent. His instinct told him to avoid it but he swung his weapon since he didn't want to avoid it at all. To his surprise, he was able to resist the evasion instinct and kill the goblin. He smiled in satisfaction thinking that there might be enough distance between them now that he already killed one. He wasn't aware that there was a goblin above aiming at him. He was hit in his shoulder again and he flustered upon seeing the goblins surrounding him. He was trembling in fear and moved backward thinking that he didn't notice that goblins were already near him. He was scared thinking that he would surely die if he made one more mistake. He looked behind him but there was no way to go. He knew that he needed to run but there was no way for him to escape. He was sweating thinking that this might be the price of going against the gift. He might die at this rate and he kept telling himself that he shouldn't die. 
Had he known it would turn out like this, he would have preferred to be unaware of his past life since he now believes that there's no difference between whether he struggled then or now. He deduces that he was still blessed in his past life with a good life where he was a divine swordsman of the Du family and a comrade of Kang Hangul, but now, he cannot accept that he is reborn as Du Qunwu instead. He cried and saw his pitiful face in the crystal. Because of the crystal, he realizes that he is already trembling with fear, shedding tears, and looks like a pathetic guy. He was mad wondering if he only recalled his past life for no reason. But then, he told himself no and if he hadn't recalled his past life, he concluded that he'd probably be living like a slob with a face like this. He doesn't want to live a pitiful life. He has been pushing himself to his limit to overcome his weaknesses and become strong so there's no way he can forget about his conviction and shrivel like a coward. After venting his disappointment by crying, he suddenly refuses to die at this rate nor run away from the enemies. He decided to overcome his fear and move on instead of running away. Go lifted up his foot and strongly stomped the ground. A lighting strike appeared and his aura suddenly swapped into a scary kid, and he was now very determined not to run away and fight for his life. At the same time, his system window popped up to inform him that he had acquired a skill, level 1 instinct control, and with this skill, he could control his instinct on will. He then beheaded one goblin which caused the other goblins to scream in anger. He pointed his sword at the goblins and attacked them one by one. Unlike before, his body can now freely move. He feels like electricity is surging within his body. A mage goblin casts a magic power to attack him and at the same time, he charges to this goblin and attacks it without any fear. He smiled at the fact that he was now unstoppable. His father was speechless, the same as Hong Chul. His father was sure that Kyun Wu had been full of fear just a few minutes ago, but now he could not believe that his son instantly regained his composure. Even Hong Chul was confused about what was going on. Kyun Wu's father then proudly claimed that Kyun Wu is his only son. And Hong Chul then asked him how the kid fought so well and he said that the protective shield they prepared to defeat the mage goblin wasn't even required. He asks if all the members of the Du family are like this but then Kyun Wu's father isn't even sure about it. Now, he witnessed that Kyun Wu can predict where the attack will come from and can even manage to avoid it. It looks like Kyun Wu managed to overcome the crisis and might have awakened now. He then thinks of something. He smiled and concluded that this was his son's gift that was now awakened already. To reach an awakening, he believes that Kyun Wu must have pushed past his limit while being determined to change. While thinking that his son's determination is truly insane, Hong Chul suddenly screams, asking him to look at Kyun Wu. At this moment, they witnessed how Kyun Wu's eyes emerged a lightning strikes and suddenly applied the best king style first form, lion crush cut, and blue thunder. His father was shocked upon seeing it. Wow, the divine swordsmanship of Du family is really cool. That's the famous Blue Thunder, right? Hong Chul said. Kyun Wu's father also cannot believe Kyun Wu's movement as didn't expect a kid like his son to master the Blue Thunder technique. He also cannot believe someone become so strong in such a short amount of time no matter how much of a genius one can be. For him, it was impossible, but now, his son is the proof. Kyun Wu still possessed the lightning strikes. His father was still thinking if he really awakened his gift. Hong Chul on the other hand was staring above since Kyun Wu's system window showed up to declare that Kyun Wu cleared the gate. Hong Chul then informs Kyun Wu's father about it but Kyun Wu's father is still in shock. After clearing the gate, Kyun Wu lay down on the ground and felt relief that he survived. His system window appeared once again to say that he had pushed his body to the limit. His physical strength stat has risen by one and his muscle strength stat has risen by one the same as his ability stat. A part of Kyun Wu was unhappy as he complained that his stat points should increase when he was fighting, not this time. Brave Hearts is a game where players' physical strength stat doesn't increase with a level up. The only way to do that would be through training or sparring in the academy. And for Kyun Wu, that was a bit tricky part of the game. Since Brave Heart aims to replay, Kyun Wu concludes that the existing data could be transferred to the next playthrough. However, he knows that it is impossible now that it's not a game anymore. Now, he wanted to gain tons of experience and become strong. While thinking, his father approached him. His father stood beside him and was glad that he survived. They weren't aware that there was something shimmering to the goblin behind them. Kyun Wu then replied that he thinks he overdid it since he cannot move at all. His father then said that it was normal since he was struggling to fight against the goblins. He also told Kyun Wu that he was really shocked when Kyun Wu triggered the blue thunder and he concluded that it was his son who was the youngest who triggered it. Kyun Wu gasped upon hearing it since he wasn't aware that he did the blue thunder while fighting earlier. Blue thunder is a phenomenon that occurs when using the signature sword technique of divine swordsmanship. The Beast King style, where friction between the mana and the atmosphere creates a blue current proper posture and speed, the extent of power the player applies to the sword, and activating the mana circuit correctly are all necessary. It's a phenomenon that only appears when various elements are perfectly harmonized. Kyun Wu then realizes why he suddenly felt like something burst out from him. 
but since he wasn't aware that he applied the blue thunder, he also wasn't sure if he could still do it again. His father then told him not to worry since he already experienced it once so his body would surely remember it as long as he kept training hard. His father then smiled at him and acknowledged him for doing a great job. Hongchul then came back to them after completing the task Kyun Wu's father gave him. He was holding a bag of magic stones and he gave thanks to Kyun Wu knowing that they could not obtain a lot of these stones if not because of the kid. He was talking a lot but then Kyun Wu didn't hear what he said since he finally saw the thing that shimmers at the goblin's corpse. He immediately picked it up and informed his father about it. His father then said that it was called a law stone that contains a providence and can be used as a material like a magic stone. Kyun Wu stared at it closer as he recalled that magic stones in the game were used as currency or artifacts, but law stones could be converted into stats. He was very curious to see what kind of law stone it was so he checked it with the help of his system. According to his system, it was only a lowest grade agility law stone. It is infused with power that enhances the user's ability and would increase agility by 1 for users with agility below 60. Upon seeing the information of the law stone he was holding, he decided to own it. What if the law stone resonates with Kyun Wu? Should we give it to him? Hong Chul asked, and Kyun Wu's father then replied, Hong Chul, you really still good at navigating these social waters, aren't you? Thank you. Kyun Wu's father then told Kyun Wu that they should check if the law stone resonates by trying to infuse it with mana. Kyun Wu tried it and he smiled while saying that the law stone was bound to resonate with him. Hong Chul then told Kyun Wu that the law stone really belonged to him since it was responding. He then tells Kyun Wu's father that he is craving some beef but Kyun Wu's father doesn't care. The next week, Monday morning, Kyun Wu attended his class but he was so sleepy and his whole body was aching so badly. Ever since the day after the actual combat, he has suffered from a terrible body ache and his mother kept on asking his father why he ended up being sick. Kyun Wu didn't realize that the recoil from using the evasion instinct would be so severe. Seeing him very weak made Hanul worried for him and asked him if he was hurt. He then casually answered that he was just a bit sick over the weekend and just suffered a severe body ache. Hanul was confused about how it happened since last week, she still saw how energetic Kyun Wu was. She then asked him if he had already taken any medicine and if he was now a little bit fine. Kyun Wu then honestly informed her that he had actual combat over the weekend. An actual combat? Like fighting with monsters? Is it okay for us to do that at our age? Isn't it dangerous? Hanul asked, and Kyun Wu then replied that he was someone from the Du family and all of his cousins of his age had done the actual combat and only him was the only one who hadn't yet so he did it on the weekend. Hanul was speechless, but she offered some bandages and ointment she had on her back. Kyun Wu refused to accept it since his wounds had healed. At the same time, he was confused as to why Hanul carried bandages and ointment in school. Hanul then said that she used to get hurt often, although not so much these days, which is why she brings it with her always. Kyun Wu sunk to the table believing that the wounds Hanul get is surely from all that bullying she experienced. Hanul suddenly moved closer to her and wanted to treat his wounds. Kyun Wu insisted that there was no need but Hanul forced him. In the end, he got a bandage on his cheek and she believed that what she was doing could help Kyun Wu's wound heal faster. Kyun Wu then told the lady that he was really fine since his wounds were all healed, and instead of putting him bandages on his wounds, he wanted the lady to instead remind him to take his medicine after lunch. Hanul suddenly became silent, and after a few seconds, she told Kyun Wu to let her know if there was more she could do to help. Since you really look like you're in pain, I'll listen to anything just for today. She added, and Kyun Wu replied, If that's what you say, then Hanul, can I touch your ears? But then, Hanul was shocked and ordered him to repeat what he said. Instead of repeating it, he apologizes to the lady as he thinks that his favor is a bit too much and seems to be bold. Hanul was blushing. She then grabbed Kyun Wu's hand and permitted him to touch her ears. She lands Kyun Wu's hand on her hair while telling Kyun Wu to quickly touch her ears and not keep it for too long. She also told Kyun Wu to say if her ears didn't cheer him up. She closed her eyes while Kyun Wu answered yes. Kyun Wu slowly moved his hand and finally touched the ears of Hanul. He was so amazed as he felt how soft and fluffy it was. He was caressing Hanul's ears but Hanul moved away from him and concluded that it was enough to cheer Kyun Wu up. Kyun Wu's face is still reddish. She admitted to herself that it was so good the moment Kyun Wu touched her ears. She concludes that it may be because Kyun Wu is used to raise rabbits. She was aware that she almost got completely lost in the sensation while Kyun Wu was caressing her ears. She felt a little bit embarrassed but then she was thinking of allowing Kyun Wu to touch her ears once in a while since he was really enjoying it. She looked at Kyun Wu and saw that Kyun Wu was smiling widely. She thought that Kyun Wu read her thoughts so she was still embarrassed. Kyun Wu suddenly gave thanks to her and said that he felt energized after touching Hanul's ears. So, on that note, Hanul, what do you think about us becoming hunters together? Kyun Wu said, which shocked Hanul the most knowing that becoming a hunter would cost a lot of money for the training. 
Kyunwu then said that he thinks Hanul has all the qualities needed to be a hunter. He added that Hanul might have come from a noble family. Hanul was confused and told him that he was saying weird things again. But still, Kyunwu insisted her to be a hunter together and he claimed that he had some reasons. First is that Hanul is a demi-human but physically superior to others. Second, the mana she unconsciously emits feels very dense so there is a chance that she's good at handling magic. Hanul disagreed since she never released a mana. She wasn't aware that Kyunwu was referring to the Hanul in his past life who was the Witch of Calamity. Every living thing unconsciously emits mana. I can sense it because I know how to handle it. Kyunwu replied, and Hanul asked him if he was telling the truth. And Kyunwu just nodded. Hanul was hesitant to believe that she could possibly become a hunter. In addition, once she turns 19, she will have to leave the orphanage. It would be great for her if she got adopted. But as a demi-human, she knows that it's unlikely, of course, she knows that becoming a hunter could lead her to a successful life and high earnings. However, being a hunter isn't something just anyone can do. Moreover, she wasn't sure that she could really fight monsters when she was so fragile. Tiunwu told her not to worry and he promised that Hanul could really do it. I'll be right by your side, so don't worry, I take care of you. He added which thrills Hanul. If you become a hunter, won't you be hunting with me? I believe in you, so you should believe in yourself too. Kyunwu said. Hanul at this moment was so clueless about what Kyunsu sees in her to be so confident that she could become a hunter. At the same time, she felt so weird since it really made her feel like she could do anything. She was stuttering while asking Kyunwu if he would take her as his responsibility. She was still blushing up until this point. Kyunwu clasped their hands and promised her. He declared that their deal is already settled and now, he wants the both of them to attend the same middle school and then enroll in the high school academy together. Hanul's face becomes so reddish again upon hearing that she and Kyunwu should be together. She then heard Kyunwu say that they must start by joining a sword academy to build their strength. Ate you saying I should enroll in a sword academy. You know, I don't have the money to enroll at such a place. Hanul replied, and Kyunwu then informed her that the sword academy was run by their family so Hanul could attend the academy for free. Hanul was shocked. She was sweating while asking Kyunwu why he was being so nice to her despite that she didn't have much to offer. Kyunwu then said that he was just hoping to benefit from Hanul's success later on. Someday, when you become a hunter, maybe I'll gain some benefits from it, right? If I have to give a reason, that's it. There's nothing else. He added. Hanul was silent for a moment. She suddenly smiled and said, What is this? Seriously. You are really weird. Deep inside her, she was very glad because of Kyunwu's kindness to her. She was so grateful and she knew that words weren't enough to thank Kyunwu. They continue to talk about becoming a hunter and Hanul expects that he will learn how to use a sword. But then, Kyunwu said that she needed to focus on physical training to learn magic. Hanul was confused as to why it should be magic, and Kyunwu then said that he felt like Hanul had a talent in magic, and he believed that Hanul would become a great mage if someone would teach her. After that conversation, their training started and continued steadily. Once school ended, they would focus on learning basic swordsmanship or strengthening their endurance at Kyunwu's family's dojo. On days when they didn't go to the dojo, they would train together at home, although it often felt like Hanul was coming over for dinner rather than training. It seemed like the purpose was reversed, but it was good for Kyunwu to have some motivation. However, since he was also a beginner with magic, he knew that he needed a teacher. There's already one person in his mind but he doesn't know where to find that person. It was the Witch of Colors, Hong Yina. In the game, she's mainly an instructor who teaches elemental magic to academy students. At this point, she is likely wandering across the country known as the Witch of Five Colors. Kyunwu already asked his father about it, but he guessed he couldn't do anything but wait, uncertainly. While thinking, a shadow appeared so he got disturbed. He was startled at first but then it turned out that it was only his father telling him that he was thinking so much and didn't even notice his appearance. Kyunwu complained to his dad for scaring him and his dad asked what he was thinking. He then honestly answered that he was just wondering when he got to meet the person he asked a while ago. His father smiled because of him being so impatient. Fortunately, he informed Kyunwu that the company he was working for got in touch with the person Kyunwu wanted to meet. That person agreed to visit in a month, however, if she's not satisfied with Kyunwu's skills, she won't teach him. I was prepared for that. If I'm not talented, there's nothing I can do. Kyunwu replied. But of course, he won't let himself fail since he has some options. He wasn't sure about him, but one thing he was sure of was that Hong Yina would surely show an interest in Hanul's talent. After telling Kyunwu the good news, his father also said that there was bad news. Kyunwu was a little bit nervous since he could see that his father's expression seemed off. According to his father, it's only been a short while since May began. It's the same thing every year. Kyunwu was confused and asked what was about it. 
His father then informed him that next would be the parents' day so they would need to visit the main family. Hyunwoo asked if Seungwoo was also coming, and his father answered yes and allowed him not to go if he didn't want to. Do Seungwoo, the one who used the triplets to bully Do Kyunwoo. Hyunwoo was thinking so much and his father flinched and asked him what was wrong. Kyunwoo ironically smiled thinking that his cousins were going to be there, and that was enough of a reason for him to go to the main family house. The month of May finally came which was also the family month. During the weekend, on Parents' Day, Kyunwoo and his father headed to the main their main household of the Shinjiam Dojo after a late lunch. While heading their way, Kyunwoo's father commands him to keep an eye on his sister. His sister was so clumsy while on their way while Kyunwoo sat still, waiting for them to arrive. His father also told him not to stir things up but Kyunwoo was annoyed saying that he had never done that. His father agreed that he hasn't but seeing what he has been up to lately makes his father a bit nervous. Tiunwu then told his father not to worry, and he was used to always being on edge at every family gathering, which is why his mother and father became sensitive and wary each time there was a gathering like this. And it's no wonder, considering that at every family gathering so far, he had never seen anything good happen. He believes that this time, there won't be any difference, even so, he must go to the main family house. He needed to acquire courage no matter what. One day before heading to the main family house, he had still his training together with Hanwell. Although he has learned to control his instincts, it is not enough for him. He refuses to be swayed by that evasion instinct again. He needed a skill that could properly control it, and there's one that fits the bill. That is courage, a skill that resists the power that someone emits. There would be times when powerful beings would emit pressure. It was done by releasing their aura and killing intent to intimidate their opponents. When exposed to this pressure, players' stats would decrease, often leading to defeat in battle. Courage not only allows players to resist it but also increases their concentration and evasion rate when they sense a life-threatening moment. He wants to learn this skill without any reason as it was a perfect combo created when it's paired with his evasion instinct and instinct control, which is suitable for combat against him. He'd like to learn it before enrolling in the Academy of Hunters. But then, he doesn't have any idea where he could get this skill from. Besides, there's a problem. The conditions to acquire it are quite troublesome. The in-game requirements are as follows. First, the character trying to acquire courage must from a party with a companion stronger than them, just the two of them. Second, after meeting the first condition, the character must fight an opponent who emits pressure without any external assistance. Although the stronger companion, Kang Hanbyul for example, shouldn't intervene in the battle until the player acquires courage, it's not an absolute requirement. In the game, Kunwu is aware that Kang Hanbyul is excluded from the party in the game since he is the protagonist courage could be obtained with a certain probability by dodging the opponent's attack. The chances of getting it increased if the opponent was strong, making it quite difficult to acquire. For Kyunwoo, it was easier to obtain it while he was still relatively weak, like with instinct control. The problem is, he doesn't know where he could find a strong opponent who emits pressure since facing such a few alone would screw him up. During that day, he had been thinking for long where he could find someone who could emit pressure without killing him, a strong opponent who won't kill him either. He then smiled ironically when he finally thought of someone who was currently at the Shinjiam Dojo. At the present time, Du Kyunwu and his finally arrived at the main family's house. Servants welcomed them and they all got out of their vehicle. One servant then offered to show them to their room and asked them to hand him their luggage. Kyunwu's mother then asked about the family elders and a man answered that the elders were in the library having chats. Kyunwu's father then asked him what he would do now that they had arrived and Kyunwu replied that he wanted to go to the training ground since staying in their room would be boring. He allowed his sister to come with him and they then waved goodbye to their parents. His father at the same time reminded him not to play too rough with the other kids and he answered that he wouldn't as long as no one won't dare to provoke him. He then asked his sister if she was now ready to go and his sister answered yes with excitement. When they arrived at the training ground, they saw statues moving and these statues were used as an opponent of the kids who were practicing inside. Upon seeing it, Kyunwoo then said that it was probably something made in Yonseong Damba, one of the ten great houses, like their Shinjiam Dojo. He observes the place and concludes that the training dummies they used at the high school academy were around even at this time. This training ground has installed something exclusive that is not accessible to the general public. Maybe it is because of their shared background in prestigious families. His sister was enjoying watching kids practicing and wanted to try to, and since Kyunwoo could not stop his sister, he just reminded her to be careful. At this point, he heard a familiar voice behind him. His eyes rounded and he slowly turned his head around. He was right, it was Du Seungwoo, his cousin who kept bullying him. How have you been? Didn't get lost your way here, huh? Seungwoo said. Hyunwoo didn't respond at all and only stared at him with anger. Seungwoo then went to Yi and greeted the little girl. Hyunwoo was clenching his fist. He then told Seungwoo that he haven't been okay because of him. How about you? Have you been okay? Though I'd be happy if you weren't. 
he added, which shocked Sung Woo the most since he had never seen Kyun Woo act this way. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 2000s likes. Please don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time.